it. If anyone listening isn't familiar with it, what they do is the, the guys have to pass two weigh in. So they have to make weight and then they have to pee into a cup. And then that cup, they use that sample in a, for a USG test. And then they have to pass the hydration level on the USG test. Why is it, Oliver? Why is it problematic? What is problematic about putting a lot of, say, faith or using that hydration and saying, okay, like, yes, you've got to pass this and you've got to weigh in? Why is that problematic having that system there? We need to think about what these tests are actually assessing. And when you look at urine, you're assessing a bodily fluid that has no function in the body. And you're using it to infer to more useful fluids. You're using it to make estimations. But the problem is we don't really know how valuable that is. Because if you think the urine is filtered from the blood, and then a lot of the hydration that we really want, care about is what's going on inside the cells. What's going on in your brain cells? What's going on in the muscle cells? What's going on in the actual places where a lot of the physiology is happening? And we're getting a urine which is filtered from the blood, and that filters into the, the fluid in between the vessels and the cells, and then that goes into the cells themselves. We're essentially four levels removed from what we really care about. And maybe that's, maybe it's fine. Maybe it's not. It's almost definitely not, <laughs> but it's about that location of the fluid. And that's one of the reasons why urine is the most problematic. What I imagine a lot of people are probably doing at one championship is that when you, I'm trying to think of the, the easy way to explain this, the, the fast way, but when you dehydrate, you lose fluid and you use, lose electrolytes, but you lose kind of more fluid than you do electrolytes. And what happens is as you're losing fluid, the electrolyte concentration goes up. So your kidneys go, wow, that sodium and potassium concentration is pretty high. We should hold on to fluid now. And you stop peeing or you, you reduce the amount of urine you produce. But then when you start drinking again, so you've lost all that, you've lost those electrolytes, you've lost a lot of fluid, and then you ingest what I have here, which is pure water. Well, I think it's just tap water, but you know, water, nothing, nothing spicy in it. Then what happens is you're replacing the water, but not the electrolytes. So then say when you bring the fluid back to normal, the electrolyte concentration is lower. So the kidneys then still, even if you're dehydrated, even if you haven't brought the water levels back to normal, because you're putting in pure fluid without the electrolytes, your kidneys start filtering a lot more. So plausibly, if you would, I don't, I don't know whether, I guess I kind of feel weird about pointing this out because if anyone hasn't had this idea, they might start using it. I might be aiding people in cheating, but I'm, I'm sure people have worked it out. If you were losing weight, you could always lose a little extra weight and then just drink some pure water to get yourself back to where you wanted to go. And then that would help you pee and pass the urine test. And the thing is, weight cutting is inherently dishonest. Like inherently when you are weight cutting, you are breaking the integrity. You are negatively affecting the spirit of what the sport is supposed to be. And that's, I'm not saying people who cut weight are bad, obviously, because you know, like almost essentially every fighter does it, but it is when it really comes down to it, a dishonest practice. And that means we can't, when I say things like that, you can't really say, Oh, well, you know, they're just going to have to do the test properly and they're going to have to respect it. It's like, they're clearly not going to, if they're going to try and lose a lot of weight rapidly to gain an advantage over their component, uh, over their opponents, they're clearly going to try and um, do whatever they can to get an advantage, including methods like what I just pointed out. I think that pretty much covers it for urine. Obviously the urine section is quite big, but yeah, no, it's no, it's li interesting. Liability. And, and I think like it, it, the two real points that you're bringing up, if I'm going to summarize it real fast is, it's just not an accurate measure of how hydrated their body is. And it's very easy to manipulate. And, and I'll put my hand up ever since, you know, you and I did that first episode, I'll put my hand up. I do it like this is, and it's almost oh. out of protest these days where I've done this with my athletes and it's kind of like, well, this is the system that's meant to solve the weight mm. cutting issue. Yet here we go. I just cut 5% body weight with this athlete and they pass their hydration test and, I would consider this body to be quite dehydrated, but because you've yeah. assigned this, this USG as the master teller of hydration for this human, yeah. all of a sudden they're hydrated. And I guess that's like a big problem for me 
And I guess like for people listening at home, it, this is why I kind of arc up about it is like, yes, I do that. And I, I feel pretty confident now that I can do that and do it somewhat safely with these guys. But I also think, well, if someone's listening to this at home and they go, oh, well, you know what, Oliver and Geordie are talking about this. I'm going to try it. You start playing this really weird game where mm-hmm. instead of this, these guys going to the sauna and just, you know, sweating it out, taking their time, you know, not letting their body overheat, you know, yeah, there are inherent risks involved with that. They play this game where, okay, I'm going to sweat, drink a bunch of water, sweat more, drink mm-hmm. more water. And you're starting to play around with that electrolyte balance. Mm-hmm. That to me is almost an additional risk that's just been yeah. created by you putting this hydration test that one, isn't that accurate and is two, very yeah. easy to manipulate. Yeah. And when, when we look at things like this, And this is in any case of conflict resolution, that when it comes to these things, you have to look at a cost benefit analysis and the potential gain of the urine tests in my estimation is vastly smaller than the cost Mm. because I'm not convinced that the test is accurate at all in the case of rapid dehydration and rehydration purely because of, and, and even just the rapid dehydration purely because of how much it's affect, affecting the bodily systems and things kind of go haywire. But I'm, I'm not convinced that it's accurate. And I'm not, con, I'm not convinced that... Oh, and the other, the other point, the obvious one, is the cutoff limit. I don't know where the 1.02 came from. And I literally just wrote what is the most up-to-date review of the hydration testing methods. And I don't know where that came from.